Hello everybody, welcome back to another weather video. Today we'll be talking about, at least for the eastern part of the US, where did winter disappear to, and is there a chance winter returns to its old self like we experienced during December? And long story short, there's definitely more opportunities coming our way for winter returning back to its old self. Now if you look on your screen here, all the way back from Eastern Asia, all the way into Western part of North America, we have this straight line that I like to call the Pacific Fire Hose. A Pacific Fire Hose is when you have a straight line jet stream that brings warm, moist Pacific air into the West Coast, causing a Western trough to set up and an Eastern high pressure to set up. This high pressure causes our warm air to get into the eastern part of the country and lessen our probabilities of getting a cold front down mixing with the storm causing a snowstorm to happen due to our trough being out west and dropping the cold air out west. Now if we want to play this out into the future about 108 hours from now according to the GFS you still have a straight line with a little bit of a wave out in 150 degrees west. Now at, if this would be true, we would still have warm air across the eastern part of the U.S. But as time goes on, you can notice our jet stream starts to become more wavy. And if you're a weather enthusiast in the East Coast wanting cold air and snow, this is what you want. The Pacific jet to become more wavy, causing it to be displaced north and dropping cold air into the east and forming a ridge out in the west. At least on the GFS on this run, it does do that in fact and if we go back one run it also does it as well so there is a good trend for our January 12th 11th 12th time frame for a possibility of a storm there's also one more possibility of a storm and that is on the 14th through the 16th there's no specific date for it yet because we really don't know but we do have good ensemble mean predictions showing that there is a potential for a storm and I will show you that later. Now if we take a look at the CPC map, Climate Prediction Center, on the probabilities of being above or below normal temperatures, anywhere in this orange to red shade across the whole country, you're at a, at least above a 33% chance of seeing above average temperatures and that's across the whole country except southwestern California and if we want to switch to 8 to 14 days, we can see that is pretty much for the same areas that it's above average temperatures except for southwestern california nevada and southwestern arizona if we want to take a look at the six to ten day precip map you can see that we definitely have a bullseye for our above average precipitation out west especially in central california which i believe that is an 80 to 90 percent chance of seeing above average precip and on the east coast you also have above average precipitation as well sadly it is mostly rain except maybe high elevations where the cold air lingers you can have a chance at snowfall and the same is pretty much for the 8 to 14 day precip map you also have a high pre uh, high probabilities of above average precipitation in california and pretty much across the whole country except southern and central texas if I didn't specify this earlier, I certainly do think that the Northeast and Eastern part of the country will definitely go back into colder conditions, if not by mid-month, definitely by later month of January. Our MGL phase is going into 8 and 1, the sector part of 8 and 1, and I'll show you exactly what this means in a moment. Our phase 8 and 1 that we're going into, if you notice, blue is below average temperatures, red and orange is above average temperatures. And if you notice in the eastern part of the U.S., in both these phases, except southeastern part of America in phase 1, are below average temperatures. This is when we usually get our biggest snowfall and coldest air across the country. And if we want to take a look back into our MGO phases, we are going exactly into those phases. Now recently, I haven't been paying attention to the MGO, but as I've been learning about it, it has completely explained what has going on recently. We just coming out of a six, seven phase. Six, which I think we're, we were just in, these are delayed by two or three weeks, explains the current pattern that we're in. The whole country above average temperatures and 
usually this is when we get our above average precipitation out west. And if we want to compare it to the CPC predictions and compare it to the MGO phase, this is phase six, what we're probably in right now because it lingers by two or three weeks. And this is the forecast from the CPC. You can see it completely lines up and it all makes sense. Now, if you want to take it into seven, you can see, all right, the west is still warm, central part of the country is colder and eastern is slightly below, which is what we are in now, seven. That's what I expect by next week, mid-month. And eight and one I expect by the end of January. So end of January into February, I expect our coldest air and best potential of winter storms if this comes to fruition with these MGO phases. And recently, like I just said, these have been, I think, is one of the biggest factors into winters that recently I've came across. Earlier, I said the ensembles were hinting at a potential winter storm for across the country. This is the GFS ensembles. This is for the 12th and 11th time frame. If you want to take a look, let me just get to the 11th. There is a little bit of potential for a storm. Last one, a little, a little bit more dominant as a showing. I'm sorry. I'm just looking at both screens. Last run had more low pressures all closer to that, uh, to get it by the benchmark of 4070. If you're in this region, that's a perfect track for snowfall. That's pretty much east of the I-95 quarter, perfect track to get a huge winter storm. And you can see on the latest run, it's all more widespread. So that is definitely up in the air with, when it comes to 11, 12 time frame. Now, if you want to take a look at the 14th, 15th time frame, you can see this is what we got. This is the old run. This is the new run. Now, there's definitely a storm potential here. We obviously just don't know where it's going to go because it's so far out. If we want to take a look at the EPS, the European ensembles, and compare it to last run, this is the 11th. Oh, these don't go far enough, so I can't really compare. This is the 10th, 11th time frame. You can see there is a couple low pressure systems out southeastern part of the benchmark of 4070. So the European isn't a big fan of the 11th, 10th time frame, but it is definitely a fan of the 14th into the 15th time frame. Look at the amount of storms it has over here from the ensembles. I believe. There's 50 total ensembles for the European, if I am not wrong. Yes, 50 ensemble members. And there is a lot here. For this being 246 hours out, there is definitely a potential for a storm somewhere in the eastern part of the U.S., whether it be a cutter, inland runner, or coastal hugger, or even out to sea storm. There is definitely a potential for a winter storm here if it comes through to tuition. And then again, this is 246 hours out, 10 days out, give or take if you want to believe the ensembles. Last time there was this much of agreement was a winter storm, was on Christmas Eve. You remember how it all started out here, and then it all became a cutter inland, which went 800 miles west, if not more. I'm just showing you that there's definitely a, a chance of winter returning with the winter storm. Not saying this is guaranteed, all these tracks are guaranteed to happen, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. I hope you all enjoyed the weather update today. Hopefully, I will be able to give you an update over the weekend to see if the models are trending towards a storm or not towards a storm. I will keep you all updated, and have a great day.